Hello folks, Phil Gallagher here for a very special modern video. So right now on Magic Online, Splinter Twin is unbanned! Well, okay, kind of. So what's going on is that there is a modern banned gauntlet event, and you can enter this and then play three rounds with your choice of one of the more broken decks from modern's, modern's history, and each one of them features a card that is now banned. So you have Mox Opal Affinity, Birthing Pod with Malira, Dredge with Hogak, uh, Countercat featuring Green Sun, John with Deathrite, Eldrazi Aggro with Eye of Ugin, Bant Stoneblade with Uro, uh, Teamer Aggro with Oko, Bloom Titan with uh, obviously Summer's Bloom, Sunny Side Up, uh, which is the second Sunrise deck, Splinter Twin, or as they call it here, Twin Exarch, and then Blue Red Aggro featuring Treasure Cruise. So the idea here is that you get to ram the most busted of busted stuff into each other and see how it goes. So today I'm going to be playing Splinter Twin, and thank you to Dragon Day Dragon for giving me a dealer's choice deck list for modern. Dealer picks Splinter Twin. Dealer picks Splinter Twin every time. Note, I do not believe that Splinter Twin is the best deck on this list, but god do I love Splinter Twin. So for those of you who never had the pleasure of playing Splinter Twin, the idea is that either Deceiver Exarch or Pestermite has the ability to untap a permanent when it enters the battlefield. And Splinter Twin allows you to tap a creature to create a creature token that's a copy of it. So you put a Splinter Twin on Deceiver Exarch. You tap the Deceiver Exarch, it makes a new copy. The copy untaps the original. You tap the original, making a new copy, which untaps the original. And this allows you to generate infinite creatures, and then you just kill your opponent via combat damage. But kind of the cool thing about Splinter Twin is you don't always have to play the combo role. You can just play a tempo role and beat down in the air with your Pestermites and things like Vendillion Click as well. And for those of you who love sick control value, you just put a Splinter Twin on a Snapcaster Mage. Like, that's just a thing you're allowed to do to rebuy like a lightning bolt or a serum visions or even a counter spell every turn. Um, it is a very, very powerful effect. And Splinter Twin was a deck that had very warping play patterns that I very much enjoyed and lots of other people understandably hated. Um, so I don't think the Splinter Twin list here is like necessarily optimal or anything. It's a Splinter Twin list. Like we're going to give it a go. Um, I am very, very happy, though, that they have my boy Karanos in the sideboard. This was my absolute favorite sideboard card when I was playing Splinter Twin. Uh, it is just a super sticky threat that gives you inevitability and card draw. And every once in a while, you can just even turn it into a 6-5, although that's pretty rare. Uh, Anger of the Gods was also a card that I was super, super impressed with. It was a three-mana board wipe that exiled stuff, which was super, super relevant versus things like Kitchen Finks that were present in Birthing Pod. Um, other than that, you have some assorted removal cards of varying natures, as well as a couple of Jace Architect of Thought, which can shrink small creatures or do sort of a mini fact or, fact or fiction sort of thing. All right. Um, if you want to see more modern band content let me know in the comments today this is a limited run event i am going to release this on monday and i will have two more days after that to record content with this so if you all are super super hyped about this please leave a comment with what deck you want to see me pilot i've got a couple of donation deck lists in my queue for december i can use them for this but i need to know now so that i can do the recording i cannot emphasize the, the small time window i have to record this content all right uh if you're new here please consider subscribing for all sorts of sweet deck lists and legacy modern and vintage and if you're a regular throw me a like before you get started it is the easiest way to support my content for free i'm so excited for this this is my jam Okay, um, my round one opening hand does not have both pieces of the combo. That's okay, though. Like, I have a cantrip, and I am just looking for one land, uh, which I now have the land that I need, uh, and from here I am just looking for a creature to put my Splinter Twin on. My opponent mulligan to five, so they're probably playing one of the more degenerate deck lists here. Ooh, a Delta? Are we playing? Ooh, we are playing against Watery Grave? And Hedron Crab. Okay, so we are we are playing against uh, what I presume is like the the Dredge Hogak deck. 
Um, I can electrolyze and kill this crab next turn, and I can remand whatever spell my opponent does this turn. Um, I am in an okay situation. I don't think I... yeah, no. That, that can just go back to your hand. This is just going to get me a card deeper. Okay, a lightning bolt is fine. That kills a crab. Yeah, alright. So, this is fine. Uh, it can get bad here. But we'll we'll kind of see. Okay, yeah, this is this is a okay with me. That is not. Uh, okay. There's a grave crawler and a blood ghast in there now. I have picked up an exarch. Uh, so my opponent dies next turn. Uh, with presumably very little to say about it, I'm gonna tap down their watery grave in the upkeep. I believe. I guess I should take a quick look at my opponent's deck list, huh? All right, so just, just for reference, so I can say that I've showed you as well. My opponent has one Fatal Push in the main deck that could actually interact with me. Otherwise, I'm just good to go. Uh, so let's play a Lighthouse. I'll pass the turn here. Also, this isn't really a dredge deck. It's just, it's just Gak. Let's tap target permanent and opponent controls. I'll go after this Watery Grave. And uh, unless my opponent does something absolutely insane, I'm just totally good here. Yeah, you can have your blood ghast. Oh, did I miss the lightning axe? I guess I missed the lightning axe before. Yeah, that's fine. Like, I beat a hogak at this point. Um, but if there's one lightning axe, there's maybe more copies. So, oh, okay. That's, that's the fatal push. Sure. Uh, now I'm a little scared. Um, yeah, this is a lot of stuff to control. Yeah, okay, there's two lightning axes, one fatal push. Mm -hmm. All right, do I want to electrolyze? I think I do. Do not think I'm going to shock myself here. I think I'm just going to take electrolyze as my one spell for the turn, probably just saving me four points of life by hitting the blood ghasts mid combat. Yep, that's fine. I think I need to essentially cycle some cards here because, like, I know, I know how I am going to win and lose this game, and it is going to be based on whether or not I can draw another combo piece because I am not going to outgrind my opponent in game one without any access to graveyard hate. Okay, yeah, there we go, fantastic. So I'll take two points of damage here. I will have Deceiver, Exarch, and Lightning Bolt on my turn. That's obnoxious. That's also just a fetch land. So that my uh, opponent just like has access to bringing the blood gas back again. Okay. The opponent has a grave crawler, which will return a venge vine. Okay. Yep. 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 Definitely spooky. Okay. Um. So I can kill the venge vine with a lightning bolt. I can block a two one. I will not be taking lethal next turn. Should be good to go. I have now seen a lightning axe and a fatal push, so there's exactly one card left that kills me. So let's go Deceiver Exarch. Tap down the Venge Vine. My opponent understandably crashes in with a bunch of. <laughs> oh my god! That's super frustrating. Like, I I don't need to tell you that my liter my opponent was on literal one out. Okay. Um, yeah, so they fetched already. Yeah, I guess it's better to get a blood gas than a grave crawler. Uh, that's super frustrating, though. Like my my opponent does not have very many pieces of interaction for me, and they have just found theirs. All right. Um, haven't done the math yet, but I can potentially like bolt snapcaster bolt to make it through this turn cycle. But uh, things are not tilting in my favor here. All right, um, that is a hard cast blood gas that is going to have haste, unfortunately. And a whole crap ton of stuff goes in. Uh, let's assume I take three of these off the table. I'll take two, three, four, five, six. I'm not technically dead. Yeah. It's bad, though. It's real bad. All right, so I'll target a lightning bolt. Lightning bolt you. Yes, I lightning bolt you. Go to blocks. I think I have to take out another blood ghast. Um, 
this means that like fetch lands are well I really just any land is just super bad for me I don't think I have outs like I tap down one of these I block down one of these I still take two uh yeah that is uh that is death for me that's that's super unfortunate all right um no not leak details where is my game return to game okay um so just uh just straight up no no graveyard hate in here just none okay cool 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 um my dispels aren't super good my spell snares aren't super good uh twisted image was yeah all right let's not talk about it <laughs> this this Splinter Twin 75 was built for a very specific time where like some things like walls and spell skites were common. So like you would use twisted image on a spell skite so that you could just like essentially like cantrip and kill a spell skite and draw a card. Um, okay. So I have some bad cards and I have a bunch of mediocre cards. The Anger of the Gods is very good. I wish I had more copies of them. Like I frequently ran two or three of these in my sideboards for Twin. Um, essentially, like, I have to beat a pile of creatures. Uh, Rending Volley's in the wrong colors. Roast is fine. I play, like, Roast is a Static Caster Karanos, or I could try to choose some wins with Blood Moon. How many basics is this, quote, dredge deck running? One Swamp. Blood Moon's reasonable on the play. Like, it's not like Harvest Pyre is an all-star either. And Cryptic's pretty slow, although it is nice to tap down an entire opposing team. I think my Snapcasters are kind of slow here. I'm going to cut one Snapcaster so that I can play a couple of Blood Moons. Like, I'll, I'll potentially take some freebies here. Uh, that's, uh, that's a mulligan. Oh, that's unfortunate. Uh, so this is five. Uh, this hand's awful, but on five I'll keep it. Um... I'm throwing back one Pester Mite for sure. I think I need to keep my lands and my cantripping thing here. Uh, I'll get rid of a Pester Mite. Uh, but th this is honestly just so bad for me. Like, I'm, I'm on the mulligan. I need to draw both a land and a Splinter Twin to win. Um, I also have to think about whether or not this is becoming a basic for my Blood Moon or whether or not this is just going to be a... Uh, steam vents so that I have better access to casting the splinter twin and I think I'm going to go for the second one like minus my cryptic command which has a billion blue pips I'm not uh super super needing to have a ton of blue mana oof pretty good by the way the hogak deck is uh one of the decks that I thought was better in the gauntlet just kind of like skimming through them real quick it it just has a lot of inevitability. Okay. Definitely scary. That's a Hogak coming down. Like, I'll I'll tap that down for a turn, but I just, like, did not have any initial plays versus this deck, and I have no, uh, no graveyard hate. Okay. I'll be, uh, Sulphur Falls. I'll pass the turn. I can tap down this Hogak, but, like, it's, it's still just there. All right. Let's tap this down. Give uh, Hogak a little nap. Yeah, I think the Stitcher Supplier should swing in. I'm not super in a position to block that right now. Um, I guess I'll block the Blood Gas. I think my opponent's just making that attack, uh, like expecting me to not either not block or they just play a land and get it back, like we see here. All right. Yep. So, take an eight from that Hogak. I don't have my opponent just dead immediately. My opponent could also Fatal Push and kill this Exarch. Theranos is not answering Hogak. I think I'm effectively dead. I'm going to go ahead and play this and just pass the turn here. I probably have to electrolyze both Bloodgasts out of play for the short-term life total boost that it gives because I'm not... Uh, super well set up to uh deal with this hogak uh that's rough my opponents played their land i think in response to that i'm gonna go ahead and junk these two blood ghasts 
Um, I'm going to fetch a basic island here. I'm going to shock these two blood ghasts and leave up a red so that if I draw a... Oh, well, that works too. Anyway, so that if I draw a lightning bolt, I can lightning bolt that venge vine. Uh, so this is 8, 12, 13, 14. 8, 12, 13, 14. Uh, no blocks required. Although I guess the block on this is free. All right, I go to three. I got the Splinter Twin. Uh, we take this one. Um, actually, was my opponent's deck list around during Force of Vigor? Because if it was, like that's that's a thing. Okay, thank you for conceding that, so I don't have to click through that. That is very much appreciated. I don't think I'm getting enough cards in my graveyard to use Harvest Pyre as an answer to Hogak. I just don't think that's realistic. I think the game ends one way or another before that. Um, I think the Blood Moon is slow on the draw, but I don't know that a lot of these things that I have here are particularly better. I could play one more Snapcaster to have another effective copy of Lightning Bolt and Serum Visions, but eh. Uh, I am just going to check real quick and see if Force of Vigor is in my opponent's deck. Uh, there are three of those in the sideboard. Um, my hand is okay. I, I will keep this. Like, it has the Lightning Bolt for the turn one crab, which is super appealing. Otherwise, this hand is slow. Okay, my opponent had the looting this time. Bloodgast and Vengevine. Looks good. Alright, uh, I have I have Pestermite Twin in hand. I'll play my Scalding Tarn here. Would love to fetch a tapped Shockland here, because then that will give me, like, the red red that I need. Um, but there's worlds where I just need to bolt something here. Okay, Gravecrawler is fine. Second creature wouldn't be super fine. Yep. Uh, carrion Feeder is obnoxious. Okay, uh, can I fetch just a mountain? I think I can fetch just a mountain, and that's totally fine. Um, I will send a Lightning Bolt at Vengevine. I just need to keep myself from dying in the next few turns, because I just have access to my combo if I curve out successfully. So I'm hoping that this remand buys me some time. Um, yeah, I guess I send that back. There's a lot of risk of my opponent just like not having another spell to play this turn. But it's possible I'm supposed to just hold up the remand for a Hogak. All right, so I'm going to take five here. Oh, my opponent messed up. So my opponent post combat. Like, this was tapped, so I couldn't have done anything. My opponent could have sacked Gravecrawler, put a counter here, recast this, and ended up in a slightly better position. Um, am I just pestermiting on my opponent's turn, or do I think this Blood Moon is relevant? If I play this Blood Moon, my opponent basically cannot cast spells the rest of this game. That's a, that's a tough one. If I had another piece of interaction that could like help deal with the stuff that was on board, I think I would do that. Um, but I think I'm just going to go Twin instead. Because, like, as far as my combo is concerned, it only goes and stops, um, yeah, and you can go to combat. It only goes and stops the Fatal Push, because they can still cast the Lightning Axes. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just gonna let them go to end of turn, and then I'm gonna tap down one of their lands. I'll tap the Blood Crypt, because that represents both of the removal spells that they could have. Oh, okay, they have Assassin's Trophy instead, sure. Uh, so I'll pick up an Island there. I will not untap your land. Life is real bad for me here. I'm on a two-turn clock. I have some cryptic commands that if I play them, I can't... If I draw them, I can't actually play them if I play this Blood Moon. <sighs> How many cryptic commands am I running? I have two cryptic commands. So I have two more outs to my opponent's stuff... If I don't play Blood Moon. But if I play Blood Moon, my opponent doesn't get any other spells this game. I think I want to go ahead and do this. It's it's awkward for me. But I think I have to preserve this point of life and play this Blood Moon now. And then I have some super sick rips like uh, Anger of the Gods that just completely turn this game around. All right. Um, but I, I have to draw live next turn. Okay, you can't recast that. Okay, that works. All right, looting is scary. All right, yep. Uh, that returns the Vengevine, doesn't it? 
or no, the blood gas was returned to play manually. Um, I expect to be dead next turn now. Um, and cryptic isn't an out for me anymore. Um, okay. Uh, I am dead. Uh, GG's. Okay, my round two opening hand is a little awkward here. I think I'm going to go ahead and keep it. I have multiple remands. I have a removal spell. I have a cantrip. I have snap gaster mage to repeat some of this stuff. Um, this is not an ideal hand in that, like, I can't use my mana on turn one, but I think this is good enough that it's not worth throwing back. Um, notably, I'd never played Splinter Twin under the, uh, the London Mulligan rules. Okay, we are playing against eggs. Uh, all right. So, would I rather remand or just play Serum Visions? I think I want to, like, make sure I hit my land drops properly. I think I'm just going to play Serum Visions and, like, do that selection. Uh, God, Harvest Pyre sucks. Uh, I will take this land. I'll play my Lighthouse. Pass the turn. And here's to hoping that my next couple of cards are kind to me. I'll be able to remand and, like, Spell Snare and stuff. Like, I will have options. This is just the thing that draws a card, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna hold up... Yeah, that's awkward. Uh, I'm just gonna hold up remand this turn. And I will have remand for next turn for this Lotus Bloom, if that's something that I end up wanting to go after. I might super, super aggressively cycle a remand this turn. Uh, I'll, I'll keep my secrets, thank you. Goodbye. Okay. Uh, fourth land is fine. Fuck you! <laughs> That's so rude. Oh, well, I guess that was gonna happen, right? I just cost my opponent some life to do that. It's fine. Like, the, re the real remand was for next turn. Okay, um, so now I have remand plus spell snare plus snapcaster mage as a sort of net of cards. Um, it is very likely that this becomes a game about lightning bolts rather than, um, anything else here. All right, um, I think I'm going to go ahead and remand their Black Lotus. All right, I have found a Lightning Bolt. I have six points of damage in hand. So, like, the, the attacks and probes and stuff start to have a real cost. Harvest Pyre only hits creatures, so that's not super relevant here. Okay, so they just caught, they just cast this for X is zero. Yeah. Reshape for X is zero gets countered by Spell Snare. Ooh, no. I don't know this deck list well enough to know what's in it without, like, taking a peek. Feels like a remand, maybe? Oh, they're cycling. Oh, sure. So they will take another reshape here. All right, I'm going to take this opportunity to just send a lightning bolt at their dome. And we'll see what they pull out. All right, they're going for the Lotus. Makes sense. So... They're sacrificing that. Um, this probably means that second sunrise is coming. All right, there's the three mana. There's the second sunrise that returns all of that stuff to play. So this becomes not a very fun deck to play against because your opponent kind of sits there and like plays with himself for a while, and like you never know whether or not you're actually dead. Also, I'm just saying the fact that my deck has no graveyard hate of any kind is rough. Okay, so these bobbles are going to cycle as well. Um, and just in case you're not familiar with the text of this one, uh, you sacrifice it, put up to one card from your graveyard on the bottom of your library, and then draw a card. So, uh, yep. Seems like they have another second sunrise. It's, it's no bueno. Okay, yep, yep, yep. Opponent will do their cycling. They put another second sunrise back in their deck. If they keep going. There's a white... Spell bomb, I don't care about. Well, I care about it a little bit. Like, it can technically kill a Pastor Might. I have six points of burn in hand. Uh, they have it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, cool, cool. All right, there. Oh, yeah. Uh, opponent is dead if they do not kill me. Like, I, I have six points of burn in hand. This can't target me, right? Yeah, from your graveyard. Okay, yep. Yeah, sus suspend your stuff, die to burn. Bolt you. Snapcaster mage. Target lightning bolt. Yep, okay, cool. All right, good stuff. Uh, negate is good. Uh, yikes, basically. Uh, so blood moon's not good. 
Roast's not good. Uh, Vandal Blast technically does some stuff, but it's not actually super good, right? Like, my opponent is trying to bring their artifacts back anyway. And it's not like a Lotus Petal. It's just gonna, like, keep passing the turn. I could bring in Jace just to, like, cycle and, like, try to draw more counter magic. Uh, basically, I don't want Harvest Pyre. I don't want Twisted Image. Um, what sort of targets does Dispel have? Second Sunrise is an instant. So I've got that. Okay, so that can stay. Uh, Electrolyze is pretty slow, but it is burn. Cryptic Command is slow, but it is a counter spell. Yeah, I think I'm going to take the Jace, like a Jace or a Karanos, and play a Negate, and probably have to call that good. Uh, my deck's not sideboarding very well. Like, this deck was built for very specific cards that are not in these other decks. Um, let's take a Jace. Tapping out on four is... Oh, I'm taking two of these. Um, two Jaces? Yes, two Jaces. It's so weird to, like, not really want to play Vandal Blast, but, like, they're they're bobbles. They're not good cards that my opponent has. Yeah, let's let's play a couple of Jaces it good but i was super lucky to win that one um opening hand is okay like i have remand click snapcaster mage for remand i have some points of burn this is fine not great but fine um i think my opponent is largely favored in this matchup there is a great draw super happy with that absolutely will be shocking myself yep that's fine um, anyway, absolutely will be shocking myself to Lightning Bolt my opponent this turn. I want to have Snapcaster Lightning Bolt as a line that's available to me on turn three. I think that's super important. So let's do the thing. Yeah. Yeah. Three to you, two to me. Uh, I think I'll just play the Misty here to like not reveal that I drew that land. Okay, sure, that's fine. Um... I'm going to re straight up reman that for tempo-based reasons. I am also going to shock again. Now I have access to my red red. Okay, picking up a negate is totally fine. So now I have Snapcaster Bolt or Vendillion click this turn. I don't think I need to click my opponent yet. Um, I will just click end of turn if my opponent doesn't do anything that I care about just to put the three power body in play. And then I'll have like Snapcaster Remand, Snapcaster Negate, and things of that nature available to me. Okay, cool. So let's play everyone's favorite fairy wizard, Vendillion Click. Oh, oh no! Oh, that's super awkward. Um, I guess I take the Silence and let them keep both second Sunrises. Can't stop two in one turn, but they can't really do that right now. Yeah, and I'm better at countering, um, whatchamacallits, uh, I am better at countering one spell a turn, multiple turns, than I am two spells in one turn right now. Second Sunrise being an instant is super awkward for me as well. So I guess my opponent, like, kind of needs a Lotus to do their thing, right? And I have, like, the reshapes covered. I am unsure if I can Snapcast or Lightning Bolt. A little risky. I might just do it just because of the amount of pressure that it puts on my opponent. Like I have a five turn clock right now. Yeah, this this is so much of a shorter clock. I I think I'm gonna go ahead and pull the trigger on it. Lightning bolt. Send it at my opponent's dome. All right, they're down to eleven. I'm gonna go ahead and just cast my serum visions pre combat. A splinter twin and another splinter twin. I don't think I care about those right now. Like, it's cool and all, but I don't think they're necessary. I'm just going to send five damage at my opponent. I have five more damage in hand. So if my opponent fetches, I can straight up just try to kill them. Which is admittedly pretty dope. I am a real good burn deck. Ooh, I think they're playing the reshape around spell snare. They are. This is very awkward. But like, I know they have double second sunrise. They probably just need to negate this. Otherwise, they get Lotus. Yeah, I think I need to negate this. Okay, that has worked. So here's fetching. That's fine. 
is also fine. Ooh, ghost quartering themselves. So this gets a basic planes. They'll cycle both to cast a second sunrise. But it's not actually really netting them much. Oh, right, this counts lands too. Okay, I guess that's not entirely true. Um, but yeah, as soon as if they fetch with one of these, I lightning bolt them and they die. And if I untap, they die. So what's up? <laughs> okay. Yep, I mean, cycle, cycle them away. I'm good with it. It starts to get awkward if they silence me. Okay, they ghost quarter themselves again. For another island. Uh-huh. So these become planes, so these are, like, tappable for quote-unquote real mana now. Uh-huh. Yup. Take your card. Sure, put the, put the second sunrise back in the deck. I'm good with it. Uh-huh. Now, is this a reshape? This is a reshape. I just get to counter it because you have exactly two mana. Yep. So I'll counter that. And then I believe you're stuck. Yep. And I lightning bolt them to one and then attack them for very much lethal. Good stuff. All right. Um, I've kept my hand for the final round here. My opponent mulligan to six. I have a turn four goldfish, assuming that nothing goes wrong. Okay. Uh, we are potentially playing a splinter twin mirror here. Oh, nope. JK. More crab. Um, so I will go ahead and just grab the steam vents, let that enter tapped then. And, uh, we're gonna run back round one again. Aha! Okay, Twisted Image actually did something. I thought I was just gonna sideboard that out every game this league, but I will take my cantripping Hedron Crab kill any day. Um, let's play the Misty so that I can fetch, fetch another tapped steam vents and just, like, take that draw out of my deck. Um, plenty of bad things can still happen this turn. Like, Stitcher Supplier is very, very, very good. Alright, there's Black Mana. But at least it wasn't, like, Crab into Fetchland Stitcher Supplier. That would have been rough. Uh, opponent's timing is not great there. That Faithless Looting should have come before the Fetch for Bloodgast. Yep. Okay. Um, I mean, this is a scary turn. Uh, but, like, thankfully my opponent did not return a Bloodgast. Yeah, uh, if they had a Bloodgast in play, that would have been a Hogak this turn. Uh, shit. Steam vents. Um, so I will hold up a remand this turn, and if I don't have to remand, I just pester might kill my opponent. Um, sounds good. I might just pester might kill my opponent anyway if they tap out. Yep, you can have your crab. That's fine. It's scary, but it's happening. Ooh. Fetching in response to your own blood gas trigger? Seems weird. Um, but go wild, I guess. Okay, a Vengevine is now in the graveyard. Uh, oh, that's two Vengevines. Well, that's spooky. Um, but my opponent tapped out, so they're dead. Uh, so I am good with this situation. And they've already played their land because this is turn three. Yep, I'm, I'm good with it. Yeah, so I just pester might tap down a Vengevine when my opponent goes to combat. Yep, here comes the Hogak. That's fine, I don't need to remand that. Now in combat. Oh, this is safe. And I will tap Vengevine. I will take my five damage. And I believe my opponent has no outs to this combo here. Twin time! Yep, and I get the concession. Um, okay. Um, 100% of the time, I want Anger of the Gods and probably the two roasts. I do not want my Dispels. I don't really want the Spell Snare. Like, it can hit the altar, but, like, as you can probably tell, like, you don't need the altar to win. Like, the deck can just put a shit ton of power into play. Um, I think Harvest Pyre is really slow. Blood Moon is slow on the draw. Like, I have, I have things that I can play that do stuff. I could play Is It Staticaster. Like, it pings Bloodgasts and X1s. In a way that sometimes matters. It's also just a 0-3. It blocks Brave Crawlers. I don't think Harvest Pyre gets to kill my opponent's stuff. And I don't think Twisted Image is super good. Like, it killed a crab and cantrip that game. Uh, I don't think, generally speaking, it's super great. Um, I could try to use Jace to dampen the effect of X1s and such. Again, I think I'm winning via combo a lot of the time. Um, I'm going to keep one Twisted Image. 
maybe I'm supposed to keep both on the draw. I don't know. Like, obviously, this is a matchup that, like, before this weekend had never been played. Um, Remand on the draw is slow here. I don't know that this hand is going to be better than mulliganing. Like, my lightning bolts and stuff have a lot better utility on the draw than normal. I also don't have a combo piece here. I don't know that I get to, like, make it to Karanos with this hand. Um, this has a lightning bolt. It's otherwise a bit of a weak hand. Um, but I think the bolt is really important on the draw. Like, I, ha I have to make it to the end game somehow. What are we looking at? Bolt not great versus Stitcher Supplier, though. At least nothing useful got milled. I'm gonna play Island and Serum Visions, try to smooth out my next couple of turns. Don't think I want either of these as of right now. Um... Really, really looking for combo pieces or, like, my anger of the gods. I'm also just, like, not good at answering the Hogak that gets into play. Like, when Splinter Twin was around, you did not need to answer an 8-toughness creature. That was just, like, not a thing that you needed to do. I might eat a Vengevine here. Uh, yep, I'm eating a Vengevine here. I'm gonna take 5 this turn and a lot next turn. I can fetch a basic mountain and lightning bolt the Vengevine next turn, but I'm still going to be taking four. Yeah, not great. Cryptic. That's awkward. Am I going to shock no matter what? I think I'm going to shock no matter what. Given Cryptic as a draw. I'm going to hold up lightning bolt for Vengevine to save four life. I will remand if my opponent does something crazy like a Hogak. Otherwise, I'm trying not to do that. Ah. <laughs> Okay, um, this is awkward. This is not the timing with which you want to do this. But I think if I'm going to stay alive, I have to do that. It's hard for my opponent to double creature. Like, first of all, they have to have two creatures remaining in hand. Second of all, they have to have the mana to cast both. Or they can just, like, play Crab into Hogak and make me cry. That thought sees played around my remand. Rough. I think I'm dead this game. Yep. So I lost my cryptic. Um, I can I can draw Tapper into Splinter Twin. Can I survive? This is eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I go down to ten to fetch. I play Vendillion Click. I block this. I take ten. I cannot survive. Uh, so I am I am dead on my opponent's turn four. On the play, I can play the Blood Moons and try to get some freebies. Uh, I think I am going to do that. I'm not sure if, I, like, Karanos is actually going to be relevant just due to how quickly these games are playing out one way or another. Maybe I do this. I could play the other answer to a crab on the play. Um, let's just run it like this, though. I mean, yep. Yep, yep, yep. Turn four, goldfish. We shall see if it is good enough. Okay. Citrus Supplier is a, is a real good start. I want to hit a Grave Crawler, which is good. Um, it's not the be-all, end-all for me, though. Just take a Steam Vents here. Uh, Vendillion Click is not really relevant this game. Um, I boarded in Blood Moons, right? I did, um, but I also have to respect my own ability to cast Splinter Twin. So I need to get Steam Vents here again. Okay, that's scary, because a Hogak can now happen. My opponent can, like, fetch, cast Gravecrawler, do that thing. Sure, I'll take one. Go to 18. Not playing a naked Snapcaster for any reason. Just grab tap Steam Vents and just kind of proceed normally. Uh, it's my current plan to just Deceiver Exarch end of turn. My opponent was leaving up a mana... Um, either intentionally or unintentionally. Uh, yep, that occurs. I'll take this damage. I'm at 15. Um, given that my opponent hasn't done anything here, I'm going to take a turn off for protection and play this Vendillion click and just, like, see if my opponent has an answer to either Exarch or Splinter Twin in hand. They've just, like, played so conservatively. Two answers? <sighs> well, that's some shit. I guess I'll take the Lightning Axe from their hand. Because, like, that also just has some added utility. I have nothing for these Snapcaster Mages to do, unfortunately. 
I'll crash in for three. There are worlds where my opponent, like, decides not to respect Splinter Twin, and I just win because they, like, tap out a Fatal Push range, but I don't think that's super... Oh my god, are they just gonna cast a fucking Vengevine? I'm so good if that's what's happening. Oh, they're gonna flash back Faithless Looting? Sure. Alright, that is a Vengevine and a Blood Gas discarded, so my opponent still has Fatal Push. Oh, yeah, you wanna play, you wanna play like a creature? Okay. So that's a Blood Gast returning. Um, so that's awkward for me. In that, like, that's gonna take my Splinter Twin. So I'll cast my Exarch in response. Oh, I guess I actually wanna tap a Stitcher Supplier rather, rather than a Grave Crawler here. Alright. So I lose a Twin. Um, I will go ahead and just block the Grave Crawler. I'm fine with that going to Graveyard. I'll take my one point of damage. And I'll top deck a Splinter Twin. Deck? Like, don't feel like I'm asking a lot, but a single instant or sorcery would really fucking help here. Sulfur Falls. Nope. Alright. Wow, my opponent is at seven. I guess, uh... I guess I'll just put my opponent dead to Vendili and click next turn. Make it so that my opponent has to, like, get a permanent that leaves play in order to use Fatal Push and kill this, and then they'll be dead to a top deck Splinter Twin. Um, Crab's annoying, because now my opponent can go Crab, Gravecrawler, return the Vengevine. Why, why is it a fetch land so that it, like, very specifically also enables Fatal Push? That's rough. Uh, yuck. Yeah. As long as it doesn't, like, flip Hogak as well. Oh, a second Bloodgast, though. Not great for me. Oh, well. Opponent's dead to a Lightning Bolt, too. Uh, this is going to be a Nail-Biter. Okay. There's the push. Here's the Gravecrawler returning the Vengevine. Okay. Yeah. I'll take this. Uh, I, I need a live draw. I have a lot of them. Even Electrolyze does it. Blood Moon is not a live draw. Uh, so I have to loot. And I need to hit a Lightning Bolt. Uh, okay, my next card can also be a Lightning Bolt. Lightning Bolt. Um, I assume I'm dead, right? Two, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. Uh, that does not quite do it. Um, uh, I won't concede immediately because it's possible that my opponent would not attack, I guess. Uh, no, I guess it's not really, right? Like, they leave Hedron Crab Black back, they still have a blocker. Sure. Okay, another Vengevine goes to the graveyard. Not great for me. I Like, I'm already dead. I want to just, like, get, like, yet another. Yeah. All right, uh, I'll concede here. Uh, so what was that? That was a that was a 1-2 in this league. Uh, I, how do I pull up that deck list? I see past deck, previous deck. Oh, just with this view? Okay, we'll do it this way. <laughs> Uh, overall thoughts on the deck list. I mean, I think this exact deck list of Splinter Twin is quite bad. Like, this was a heavily metagamed deck list, right? So, like, there are these main deck Twisted Images, which is a card that was, like, not really even playable in, like, a limited format, right? Like, this is very, very specifically for things like Spell Skites. I think that we're seeing main deck play uh, for Splinter Twin Mirrors. Like... That's a highly metagamed card. Harvest Pyre is a highly metagamed card. Like, that was so that this deck could have access to something that could kill a Tarmogoyf, uh, which is, like, what Roast is doing as well. Um, and, like, Spell Snare is a very contextual card as well as, dis as well as is Dispel. So, generally speaking, in a lot of matchups, like, you have a lot of cards that are very weak in game one. And... Like, this deck is missing some major sideboard cards that it would, like, need to fight against some of these other things. So, like, while we have something like Vandal Blast to play against things like Affinity, like, we, we, we literally do not have a single piece of Graveyard 8 here or the Hogak deck, and we only have one copy of Anger of the Gods. So I don't think that this was a great Splinter Twin deck list to submit for this gauntlet specifically. Um, if I'm being kind of like critical of this, I, I think there are much better generic 
twin deck lists than than this one um but like i was super happy to be playing this deck again like the games were interesting um but i do feel like the hogak deck is just like better than this deck um like what i was doing was like quite powerful and if draws were ever so slightly different like i just as easily could have won those those games versus hogak right like because they were still very close but i just i just felt like i was the worst deck there um, but I enjoyed playing this a lot, and I hope you all enjoyed watching it. If you did, throw me a like before you go. If you're new here, consider subscribing for all sorts of fun shenanigans in the future. Have a great rest of the day, folks. And again, if you want to see more of this content, let me know today so I know whether or not I should be recording more of this over the next 48 hours. See ya!